for the warm welcome. Um, it's such a privilege to be here. I've loved the music, I've loved the readings, and uh, you know, thank you again. I can't thank you enough. Bodywork. One. One day I promised my body this was it. I would stay. Put up with its little aches and trickles, twitches, gurgles, clicks. The noisy thing. It would be clean, well fed. I would buff its nails, part its hair and keep it covered in public with soft fabrics, fluffy cottons, velvets, lamb's wool. Then my body opened its mouth, shouted actually said things I can't say, then, after long silence, swallowed me whole. So now I am my body, nothing less, and this is me speaking up. Two. It isn't hard, the job of breathing. It's not even hard to speak of breathing. And the insects and whirlers inside and all their spiky complicity in the day to day. Count the kitchen as a room, 
that do not count as scullery, landing lobby, closet, bathroom, or warehouse, office, or shop. One. Signed P.G. Lynch, Clock of Works, Houses of Parliament. In the broom cupboard, with her picnic of lime juice, meat lozenges, biscuits, and a noisy apple. A bottle for when she is caught short. Too dark to read properly, though the glow under the door catches a snatch of a label. Offered for the use of those persons who require a substitute for their ordinary diet when on a journey or unable to procure a good meal. By Sunday morning, she smells of polish, fear, and dirty rocks. Her joints are stiff. She banged an arm when the door opened a crack, then shut smartly. Her heart is big under her ribs. She can feel every beat of a tricular gallop that says, I am here, I am here, I am here, I am here. I am here, and this small dark parliament is home. You probably, most of you know that the, the poet John Keats trained as surgeon at Guy's Hospital. Um, and I had called to go to Guy's, it was something minor. And saw a consultant and couldn't help wishing that he was John Keats. <laughs> so uh, I imagined in this poem the hospital consultant is speaking and he is John Keats, as if he were a modern day doctor, that guy's, would that he were. Hi uh, guys, come in, come in. My name is Dr. Keats. I'm glad you found your way safely to the Southwark Wing Blue Zone because the online map can seem a bit fevered to the poorly, the way it swipes and zooms under your finger trembles. <coughs> Sit down. You are pale. Your pulse is fretful. And if I ask you what you see when your eyes are closed, I want you to tell me about the pink wall of your eyelids, the veins and tendrils and floaters, Nighttime in an English wood, thick with such life, your ears and nose send purple, sunburn and thickets to fill your brain with old nature, only a shadow knowledge to us now. You ask me about your prognosis, because I can see inside your body. I built for you a magnetic resonance imaging machine and threaded you through it opened you out in sequences, all your soft artifacts and concurrent planes pouring into the screen. You will cease, that much is clear. If I were you, I would stay melodious for as long as you've got, blushful and ready to be shaken always by your first love, your first sleep. Um, Keats's fiance, Fanny Braun, wore the engagement ring he gave her all her life, though he obviously died when we were both very young. Um, she even married, she even wore it after her marriage to someone else. And you can see the ring in uh, the Keats house in Hampstead. And the stone is a very kind of angry version of amber, and it struck me like quite a burdensome thing to have worn all those years. And I, I wrote a poem trying to catch the colour of it, which I didn't, no one could. The stone is called Almondine, and that's the title of the poem. A low burnt coal in an unlit room, a wolf's eye, a grape from Aquitaine, a glare, a shadow caught in glass, a shut lid, night fog through an alley, a blood glut, busted stoplight, a beetle back, a droop dark crocus, a vein bulge, a bee mouth open, a wine tanged palate, anger in 
a stone, hill heather, hurt nail, neutron star, vulval, rosary, wimbery, black, red, blue. <coughs> You know, when you go to the hospital, you always then have to go back, like six weeks later. So this is back with Dr. Keats again, six weeks later, back at Guy's. Fortunately, he's still there. Come in, come in. My name is Dr. Keats. Yes, we have met, I know. Was it when we reviewed your x-ray? I remember the ribs shifting round towards the spine, turning and turning in a panoramic sideshow with a flicker of organic mystery triggered with every blink. I am going to read your test results to you, but note that there is no shadow across my face, no whispering among your notes. Let me check your pulse for axioms, for nothingness, or the beat between. You look drowsy, clouded, blood drawn into your forehead. These may be side effects only to be expected in your airy condition. Stay steady, entangled, relax and let your identity press on me until I am entirely in the know. Inside or out, I learned. 
learn to dwell in the hiccup of white space between me and the pointed stalk of my speech bubble. How to push thought across that gap. Yes, that was the thing. How to be deft enough to keep the shape dynamic. A burst of glint and shade in a transparent sphere. A trace across a page. I'm not sure, I come from London, I'm not sure what air quality is like here, but in London, air quality has already exceeded its year's allowance um, to be filthy now, but it's only January. Um, so it makes me wonder what we're breathing. Urban air. On the in-breath, it's made of gutter soup and small change gone particulate and burnt offerings. On the out-breath, leftovers from above and body heat and body moisture, even scraps of body outside itself at last, cells set free and on fire. Um, we're in a gallery, so um, I just want to read some poems which were led by paintings. Um, and I guess 
guess I found a way of talking about things that are too terrible to talk about in a normal setting. So, there are just three of these. I think there should be more. We'll see. So it's called, overall, Three Folk Tales from the Republic, and the Republic is the United States of America. One, out of her element, Ivanka polishes her trotters to make a five-minute walk to the door of the tower. Once outside, she's carried over the cobblestones by her retinue, way above the ground, the dirt, the down there gravel, the big mess outside. Two, <coughs> daily life. Mornings, Ivanka blows her father, that is, she blows her father up into the messy balloon shapes he will inhabit all day. At midnight, he is vacuum packed, flat to push under the bed, her flat pack commodity, flat screen, thin tin mirror in which we see our own reflections and want to die. Ivanka's book, she did, she actually had already written her um, autobiography. <laughs> Ivanka's book is made of gold, a bit encrusted to tell the truth, with death, sweat, and exclusion twinkling along the foredge and the grain. The book's artifactual value is made of skin and body cells, long nerves of shot children, teeth of dissenters. It's a beauty. Open it, fall in, and never read again. Thank you.